Say that again, Jeanette. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds my future. There it is. Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love Online. And we are reading 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Hmm. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. And you know, it's always referring to fruits of righteousness. And now we're going to skip down to verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Here's another one, verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth the canker of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. Now, before we go any further in the word, let me just interject right in here. God is preparing us for service. That's one thing we have to remember. We must also work on our end to prepare. Part of that preparation is taking a bath every day in the word of God getting consultation from the leading of the Holy Spirit, taking heed to God's warnings that he gives us through his spirit, being as obedient as we can to God's ways. Now, there was a scripture I read, and it was it was very interesting because it kind of shows what we're going through, and I'm, I'm really trying to set the atmosphere. We're going to Amos. I'm going to go through a few scriptures before I really delve into the word. So you kind of get a feel of where we're headed. Amos chapter 3, reading verse 14 and 15. I want to get some of these in to make sure I cover them so I don't end up getting sidetracked. Verse 13, hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in the day that I shall visit the, tra- excuse me, that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house and the houses of ivory shall perish and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. Now that reads to me of the day of vengeance of our God. Because when God is ready to bring a shift, when God is ready to act, to to bust a move, so to speak, there are times when you watch what's going on, when it seems chaotic, you, you, if you have an eye to see, can still recognize the hand of God right in the midst of all of it. You can see the control that's under God's divine power in the midst of what seems to be chaotic and destructive. So it behooves you and me to stay as close to God as possible through this time. Because these are very precarious times that we're moving into. We're already in. They're precarious. There are strange happenings going on, weather anomalies, food shortages, all kind of Crazy diseases are going to start springing up. People dropping like flies for different reasons. Lawsuit after lawsuit. I was mentioning that to Lynn over the phone the other day. 
that I believe that within a three-year period, from right now, within a three-year period, not after three years, but within, there are going to be a lot of lawsuits dealing with the you-know-what, which I'm not going to mention because YouTube will cut it off. So moving right along, understand that these things, some of these things that are happening are necessary evils for God to bring forth his judgment and his mercy, depending on what side of the pendulum you're swinging. Hmm. All right. So let me move on. And I just wanted you to see that because understand that you're going to see some high things topple down to the ground. And you know how we say in the streets, the, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's exactly what this is talking about. We're going to see people, heads of state, leaders, leaders of churches, leaders in politics, leaders of countries, rich, uh, the wealthy, the, 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 the uh, elite, whatever. We're going to see certain individuals crash down on their faces. And that's going to be the hand of God. Some will drop dead. Some will drop horribly. And my prayer to God is when they drop, all those coins that are falling out of their pockets get distributed among the poor, the ones that need it the most. Because I do believe there's going to be a financial shift as well. So moving right along, let's go on to Isaiah 61. I'm reading this so you can kind of get a feel of what could happen in the midst of all this chaotic turmoil. The Spirit of the Lord, we're reading from verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Now, before I go any further, because I'm definitely going to read verse four, you have to understand that when God brings things on to the planet, when he ignites events over here and circumstances over there, what you find is God is also ministering to his people. That's why it pays to be on his side so that he can be on your side and be for you rather than working against you. You hear what I'm saying? So this is the time to draw as close to God as you can. You have to have an ear to hear. You may want to go here or go there. And the Holy Spirit might say, stay home seven days in a row. Don't leave your house. You might be restless, bored, antsy, and whatever. But God knows what's happening out there. And one second can change your life forever. And you may not have the mercy of God to pull you out and take you through death's door into his presence. You might have to live through the consequence of disobeying his voice. So if God says, stay home, stay home. If God says, leave that person alone, leave that person alone. If God says, stop watching this one or that one on YouTube, they are not of me. Stop watching them. Stop, stop watching them no matter how juicy the goodies might be. Stop watching them. There are ministries God may pull you away from that are actively out in outreach, but because of the spirit and the demonic activity involved 
in that group or in the particular church or in that particular movement, you may have to pull away from that in order not to allow yourself to be contaminated. Because one of the tricks the devil will pull is he will have you get so active that you will get involved with people that are messy. And God may be telling you, they're messy. You need to cut that loose before you get dirtied up. Because one thing dirt does, it leaves a mark. And you do not need the mark of dirty Christians on you. So whoever you associate yourself with, whoever you affiliate yourself yourself with, whoever you join yourself with, you have to make sure they're on it. The Lord gave me the scripture also that said, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? So you have to make sure you're in agreement in the spirit or else they can do you more harm than good, even in the name of Jesus. That's where you have to be watchful about that. All right. Now, I'm going to continue reading. Verse 4. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. The strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Mm. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Now, this, this is, is what I want you to hear as well. You have to make sure that the ministries that you're involving yourself with, the people that you're hanging with, the friends you're affiliating yourself with are edifying. Ministry is one thing, but when you're ministering to toxic people, you have to make sure that you do not yoke up with their toxicity. I'm saying it slowly so you get what I'm saying. Do not yoke up and come into sweet communion, which will turn out to be unholy communion, if you stay too close to people that are full of toxicity. That's the best way to say it. You have to be careful. I remember uh, a week or so ago, I was talking to a friend of mine about how there are times you have to back away from the very people that you've been close to for so long because the growth is being hindered because of toxicity. The progress is being hampered because of infectious, open, runny wounds. And I don't know if you've ever dressed a wound before, but I've watched nurses go in and dress a wound of what you would call a decupitus. And many people have decupituses uh, or decupidi, or however you say it, <laughs> I think it's Latin, all over their, their, their spirits, all over their hearts, their minds. They've got uh, a decupitus is a bed sore. It starts out looking like a little, uh, you know, canker sore. That's what it starts out looking like, or a little blister. And it comes from too much pressure being on one spot too long. Happens to patients who are not turned, massaged, and washed all, often enough. Or, or allowed to sit in their waist for too long a period of time. It breaks down the tissue of their skin. 
and they start to form these sores. Well, if they go undressed for too long, the sores get deeper and deeper. They get deeper and deep. Are you hearing me? I'm making an analogy. They get deeper and deeper. And what ends up happening, if you're not careful, infection can set in. Then you've got an open, runny wound with pus. And the nurse has to put on a long armed glove with sanitary instruments and soft uh, gauze. Thank you, Lord. And they have to reach in. And I mean, the stench is extremely, it's almost unbearable. They have to reach in. I've watched them. And you know, those open runny wounds, the decupitus can burrow itself all the way to the bone. One woman, one nurse was cleaning out a decupitus and you could see the pelvic bone, the rear of the pelvic bone as they were reaching in the right side of that hip to clean out that decupitus and their hand went in to the hole. When you deal with people, you have to be careful in these last days because there are so many even born again Christians who can almost contaminate your surroundings. You have to be careful who you yoke up with. They have to be full of love. They have to be living a holy life. They have to be drawing close to God, wanting to be close to God. They have to hunger for holiness, not casually approach it like they can pull it up when it's convenient and when it's not convenient, they can fall back to their old ways. They have to be true blue. They have to be genuine, sincere. They have to be full of truth and honesty. They cannot be conniving. And when it's convenient, they give in to their flesh and, oh, well, the Lord understands. No, you have to surround yourself with those who hunger. It's better to be alone. And it's better to be lonely than to hook up with toxic people. All right. Now, the reason I say that is you know how 2 Timothy 2 was talking about a soldier and how that soldier has to carry himself? Let's go back to that real quick. All right. No man that wore it entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. I, the reason I am stressing this is because many of you are going to be serving God more and more in these last days. And serving God, you have to be careful how you prepare yourself for the service. Some air areas of service, as you know, in normal, natural life require uniforms. Some of them require sanitation, like gloves, sanitary instruments, gloves, sterile equipment. Some forms of service require extreme cleanliness. See, the reason for all of this is to keep down the threat of contamination. Because sin floods this world. The spirit of Antichrist floods this world. Perversion <laughs> is infiltrating this world in a very big way. Blasphemy against God. Indifference toward the things of God. Mocking the things and the people of God. The standards of God. The word of God. It's prevalent now. It's all over the place. You can hardly watch a movie without, you know, you're thinking you're watching a good movie. Next thing you got two women tonguing each other. You know, what? So knowing where this world is headed, as I call it, to hell in a handbasket, you have to be very wary of who you hang with. Because some of you 
are hanging. I don't know if you ever watched a movie called Divination, but some of you are hanging with some old school buddies, some old chums that you used to know. But what you don't know is they are an assignment sent straight by the devil to pull you down and out, baby, because they are involved in witchcraft. They are involved in the occult. They are involved in white magic, black magic, whatever kind of magic you want to call it. And they are there as a trap and a snare to pull you off the beaten path. This is what I'm, I believe I'm getting from the Lord as well. Some of you who watch YouTube, be careful what you're taking in. See, <clears throat> this is why everything around you and everybody and you and everything you do must aim towards sterilization <laughs> because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. You're going to be a soldier for Christ. You're going to serve him. You're going to get out there and do a mighty warfare for the kingdom of God, pulling down strongholds, relieving the oppressed, delivering the bound. You're going to be doing all kinds of exploits for the Lord. But how can you do exploits if you're not under the anointing of God? See, you can get out there and do your thing. You can be called of God to serve ice cream. I'm, I'm saying something ridiculous right now. Just, just go with me on this. I mean, you can be gifted, but if the anointing is not on it, you might as well work for McDonald's, frying hamburgers. You might as well go and do street sweeping or, or go on and be a doctor. Go, go on and be a lawyer. Get them big bucks. But don't worry about impacting people's lives because without the anointing, you can be gifted, you can be called, you can be given all the information, you can be equipped, you can be sent. But guess what? If you are not making sure that the anointing is at an all time high, what you're doing, you might as well just wash your hands, sit down, turn on a good monster movie, relax, and have yourself a good cup of wine or whatever, a good total weed. Because without the anointing, I don't care what you do. I don't care how much you do it. I don't care how, how many sacrifices you make. Without the anointing, you are nothing. You're doing nothing. That's what you have to remember. You've got to be anointed. And God will not cohabit with sin. Ergo, you are not to cohabit with sinful people. Counseling is one thing. Prayer is one thing. Bringing the word, deliverance, and ministry is one thing. Yoking up and hanging out is another. You got to be careful who you hang with. You hear me? I don't just hang with anybody. Not because I think I'm holier than thou. Not because I think I'm all that great. Not because I think I'm all that important. No. It's because I know I'm weak. I know where I'm weak. And I can't afford to. Do you hear me? I need the power of God to keep me girded up and strengthened for battle, strengthened for service. I need him to strengthen me to live out my own holy life. I can't do that mixing and, 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 and blending and, and as I used to call it, blending in with the darkness and the works of darkness and the people of darkness. No. No, you can't do that. You have to know the times we're living in. And there are certain chances you just can't take. There are certain allowances you just can't let. You can't. So, whatever you do, stick your ear right on God's bosom. Listen for his heartbeat. 
Listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Ask daily, not just once. It's because you spoke in tongues once doesn't mean it sticks for the rest of your life. You got to get fueled up, baby. Even the virgins had to go back and, and add some oil to their lamps so they'd be ready when the bridegroom came. And you must keep your oils trimmed and burning, your lamps trimmed and burning. You got to stay under the anointing, under the light, under the unction, under the word of God, under the power of God, under the direction, counsel, and leading of his spirit. Because there are too many waves going around and it's very easy to be swept off the beaten path. So some of you who are watching YouTube, thank you for bringing that back to my mind. Some of you who are watching YouTube, be careful with all these prophets. Be careful about it. There are some things I could prophesy just because I know what's going on and I've been watching the news and I can say, watch, and this time that's going to happen, that's going to happen, this going to happen. Not necessarily under the anointing unction, the anointed unction of God. Be careful with that. I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. I've been saved since 1981. And I've been fooled by some. And God had to open my eyes. And the more he opens my eyes, the more I realize I can't just believe everything I hear, no matter how, how truthful it sounds, no matter how pretty and holy, no matter how much word is mixed in with it. The Holy Spirit has to register and witness in your spirit. And the closer you get to God, the closer you will recognize that witness and the higher level your discernment will be. And the higher your level of discernment becomes, there'll be some folks you're listening to now. You're going to cut them like a, a gangrenous uh, leg. You will cut them off completely two or three years from now because you'll see they're blowing smoke up your nose. And you think it's Holy Ghost smoke because they're using all the right verbiage and they're saying all the right things. See, I can go on YouTube and watch this one, that one, the other one and say, oh, yeah, and come on and tell you like I'm getting it straight from God. You got to know who's feeding you, who you're hanging with, who you're ministering to. The groups you're spending time with, you've got to know that it's of God. I'm telling you, you've got to know it's of God. You can't just assume because it sounds good. Let me share this with you to show you how easily we can be swept aside. I was uh, sitting in the living room. This came to my mind this morning. So I believe God wants me to bring it because it's coming to my mind again right now. Um, <clears throat> I was sitting in the living room uh, with my mother and father. I was about maybe 16, 17 years of age. And my father was sitting on the couch. And all of a sudden, my mother jumps up. We see the fire truck go down the street. And my mother jumps up. And she says, buddy, buddy, there's a fire down the street. And she's almost tripping herself crazy trying to get to the door so she can go out in the front yard and see what's up. You see, we're all New Yorkers. And I'm going to tell you a little something about New Yorkers. We like uh, sensationalism. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Look what they said. Look what they did. Look what happened. Ooh. Whoa, that's crazy, man. Yeah, okay. That's kind of the New Yorker in us. We're nosy too. So here we are. My father is watching my mother dash out that front door. And he turns and looks at me and he says, that right there is a perfect example of human nature. <laughs> he said, no matter how smart, no matter how ignorant, no matter how classy, no matter how tacky, 
The human nature loves blood and guts. They love the gory. They love the sensational. They love the fiery tales of, oh, look what happened. Oh, they get all excited when they hear bad news. Ooh, juicy, like juicy gossip. I would have never thought of that. But my father said, just like your mother ran to the front gate. That's how a lot of human beings are. They're drawn like a like a a, a a gnat to the light, not to God's light, to the, the man-made light. They're drawn to it. Their curiosity gets the best of them, only to find out that some of those lights are zappers and they'll zap them to death. They're drawn to the very thing that's going to kill them. They're drawn to the very thing that's deadly. They're drawn to the very thing that's negative, toxic, poisonous, infectious. They're drawn to it. Why? Because it's juicy and it's sensational and, it, and it's eager beaver. Oh boy, I get to hear this. I get to watch this. Oh, did you hear what happened? Did you hear what they did? Human nature. Human nature. So... We, even as born-again Christians, we have to remember we have this treasure, the Holy Spirit, in earthen vessels. And we have to watch our step and be very careful not to get so sidetracked with all the juicy stuff that's online that we forget what we're supposed to be doing for God ourselves. Some of us who are in ministry have to be careful not to get caught up in Joe Blow's ministry, not to get caught up in, 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 in Frank Zahima's, I'm making up sounds and names, uh, ministry, not to get caught up with this uh, Christian group over here that's out there doing this, that, or the other. You've got to make sure that you're hearing from God for yourself. What does God want you to do? Now, there may come times when people want you to help them in their ministry. You ask God, he gives you the green light, do it. That may be part of your training. That's very good. But don't get so caught up in anybody else's ministry that you lose sight of the fact that God has one for you one day. Get your training. Do that. I did ministry with groups and people for like 20 something years before I started getting a feel of where God was sending me for my own assignment. But don't let that be the end all. Always seek God for the explicit and for the specific calling he has on your life. Amen? And then live the life that makes God want to use you. Live the life that, um, that ushers in the anointing of God, because only the anointing breaks the yoke. You hear me? We used to tease years ago, you would hear the preachers in the pulpit. They say, yeah, boy, they can talk in tongues. But boy, when they let that tongue go, they can cuss you out up one end down the other too. With that same tongue out of your mouth comes blessing and cursing. What does James 3 say? These things are not so to be. So you have to live out an example of holiness, righteousness, genuineness, purity. Mm. Okay. I'm not going to wear your ear off, but just remember. Keep yourself in shape for these last days, because when God points to you and says your turn, you want to be dressed, cleaned up, dressed, anointed, and ready to move on his command. Amen. Amen.